Ah, here you are, man. Yeah, I'm here, man. All right, all right. So it's Casa del Loki broadcasting live on our YouTube channel. I know it's kind of shaky for anybody who's out there with us right now. We're starting a little bit early, but we should have uh, a bunch of guests coming in through tonight. Uh, hopefully we'll be talking with Lanny Swerdlow. He's uh, one of the big advocates here in Southern California for medical marijuana. We're going to be talking to um, a few other people who have uh, uh, been key you know, components in instrumenting uh, certain actions that took place. Like, uh, hopefully we'll be getting a call from someone from like the Cannabis Cafe in Oregon, uh, the Oregon Normal Cannabis Cafe. Um, I, I can't promise anything at this point. Everyone's very busy, but hopefully out there we're going to get some people in. Uh, those of you that are subscribed to us in, in our circle, definitely come in. Uh, any question is a good question. Uh, we have a friend of ours here, Fabian. Uh, his name looks like, it says Lucas, but that's his brother. He's coming from Argentina. And we're going to open up the chat room a little bit and check our posts. And if you have some questions, if you're watching, uh, just go ahead and post it in the comments there and we'll pull it up on our page. Um, if you have G+, if you're on Google+, feel free to join and hang out. Go ahead and look for Loki Gen, and uh, you can join the hangout if you're in my circle. If not, you can find us streaming there as well. So hopefully this is not going to cause too much of a, a problem, ideally. So how are you doing tonight, man? All costs of the Loki. I love it. We gotta see if we can get some other people in here. Oh, we got Luke in here. Yeah, he is. Luke. Hey guys. Luke is a our friend of ours out on the East Coast. He is our controlled subject. He has never been exposed to anything like cannabis before. He nope. is uh he is what the majority of people out there might be thinking right now. But he's open to the idea. And that that Very. is he in green right there, being open to the idea. Oh, Sarah, Sarah. Hello, Kitty Kitty. How are we tonight? Good, how are you? Good, 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 good. Fabio, do you do things? Let me, uh, come on, Mike. How are you? Is that better? I don't know if you can still hear me all. No? Yeah, I can hear you. Did I just, like, kill my mic for everybody? No. It's dead. Cheers, uh, so I am back on. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Perfect. No more echo. Beautiful. So Luke, what's on the agenda tonight? You're uh, you're up pretty late for us. Uh, not necessarily. Um, I suppose. When you, by the way, when you say my agenda, what exactly do you mean? I apologize. Um, I well, I'm sorry. I, what I meant by is, uh, you are exposed to what the majority of people would be exposed to as far as what is open and available knowledge on that campus. is correct. Um, you are also uh, willing to take into consideration that there might be some beneficial use. Uh, with cannabis in yourself, for whatever it may be, um, or you just want to try it, just just to try it. I mean, what happened to humanity having a rite of passage where we get to try things, you know? There's a point where in every aspect of mankind, we have these rite of passages, but um, we're starting to see less and less of that around here. Right. It's like we think of the uh, it's we think of the ind indigenous tribes of the Central Americas and of Africa, like um, there's one that makes a, a woven glove filled entirely with the uh, with uh, powerful bullet ants with the stingers inward, and they have to wear that for a full 20 minutes. Or yeah. I believe there's an African tribe that reveres the uh, crocodile, and as a result, they uh, partake in scarification of their backsides and uh, raise the skin so that it uh, is a manner similar to the leather of a crocodile. Right. To and you don't see anything like that um, 
certainly in. I'll, I'll in, tell you um, what we did find, though. Oh yeah. Those in the science community, they have found some of the oldest human remains uh, up in the Siberian area, close to the North Pole caps, and this person had completely woven out of hemp a pouch, and inside, separated were the seeds, the hemp, and the marijuana. Hmm, makes you wonder. You know, if we've been using this for, you know, 35,000 years. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I would think that we would either know to stay completely clear of it or see the benefits that it's, it's actually brought. Um, hey, and I'm talking about just regular benefits. I mean, not even about just getting high. It's about having a cost-effective, cheap, easy-to-produce, material for building houses, making clothes, stitches, whatever. It's a beautiful thing. So what if someone gets high after work and sits down and burns one and, and sits back and relaxes? Um, my experience is, is that uh, it turns out a lot better than if someone was to come home and try to relax with some tequila or acid. That would probably not be a good idea. Uh, psychotropics and alcohol can actually make you a very violent person if you're not otherwise prone towards it. Um, but uh, I've known very few violent cannabis users, and uh, I find that to be strange. But uh, definitely, the rite of passage is, is missing here. Um, and. Uh, from an anthropological standpoint, I would think that we need some form of that. I mean, I can remember, you know, thinking, oh, crap, you know, we're supposed to go do this and that, and as a kid, you know, you go out and you do the opposite of that. You get drunk or steal cigarettes and you're trying to be so cool and adult. These things we have to experience as human beings, or we lack that uh, ability to associate. Right. It's the element of the taboo that makes it so desirable for the youth to try it. Now, if they were to grow up with it and learn to use it in moderation or learn what it is for and what it isn't for, exactly, then perhaps we could use it a little bit more responsibly. Exactly, and that's what I meant by the whiskey and the LSD. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, the whiskey is not is going to be as problematic as the as the lysergic acid diethylamide. I would not suggest it for anybody more than maybe once or twice uh, a lifetime. But if you're going to do it, do it in a controlled setting with the session setting and a, a specific purpose in mind. Um, it brings my attention down towards Lucas's, or, well, Fabian's end down there, man, uh, where they uh, still have people who practice the ayahuasca ritual. Well, they, during the ayahuasca ritual, the shaman will constantly beat a drum and sing while blowing tobacco and cannabis smoke on the person to ease their transition into the spirit world, purging their body of, of uh, illnesses. Uh, interestingly enough, this uh, combination of the Banisteriopsis and the Chacruna uh, is a good dysentery, it has immuno boosters, and it has a very simple uh, tryptamine that we, we find naturally in our body. Um, and, and a lot of that is extremely intriguing. Now, there's a lot of hardline scientists out there that are, you know, kind of opposed to, to the idea. They're thinking, ah, oh, psychotropics, you know, psychedelics, tryptamines, the 60s, uh, it's, it's a mess. Well, you know, at the time, we didn't know what we'd stumbled upon. Um, something that powerful, we should reassess, you know, what we're doing. I, I think that given the situation and the times, now would be the best time to uh, start investigating this simple plant. Um, interestingly enough, that actually brought me another idea. I, I was looking um, through articles just the other day about um, some neuroscience, and um, it's completely not just dedicated to cannabis. Cannabis is a very small part in this blurb, but they were researching the uh, receptors in the brain uh, and how to moderate those uh, chemically or uh, you know, biomolecularly, however they want to do it. Um, and 
the, there's a, a receptor in there for cannabinoids, uh, specifically for the CBDs and CBNs of the cannabinoid end, but definitely the, the delta tetrahydrocannabinoid as well, the DTHC that one likes. But um, it's interesting to me that, that uh, it's been around humanity for so long that our bodies have a receptor for this. Um, and it's these little things that you find as you as you go through the search. Now, like I said, uh, Luke, you look like a fairly healthy, active young man, mid twenties. You know, and you look at me and you think, oh, he was a young guy, you know, in his thirties. But you don't see the, the meta face, the behind scenes, uh, where I have a rare illness that I'm dying from. And it, this spawned me to start searching for answers because the people who are supposed to have the answers didn't have the answers. I went so far as to go to school and take organic chemistry and get into medicine, knowing full well that they wouldn't hire me <laughs> just, just to find some answers. Um, now, I wouldn't have clung so hard to this if I didn't find those answers um, hidden away in these little things that even, even our government can't deny anymore. <laughs> I mean, the last time they did a federally funded test, uh, the answers came back completely in our favor, and they, they tried to suppress it. And we were like, no, you can't hide this from us. We've been waiting for it. You know, Why are we dedicating our lives to this if you guys are just going to come in and take it away? It seems senseless and poor. <laughs> but. Well, absolutely. I think we should proceed with caution. Like, I, like I referred to the big tryptamine boom of the 60s there, late 50s, early 60s. Um, we didn't realize that we had stumbled upon. You know, I believe Albert Hoffman uh, was the one who accidentally found it and sort of accidentally dosed himself and realized, wow, this is very, very powerful. <laughs> and uh, I, I should probably, you know, I want to share this with the world, but how? How do you, how do you approach something like that? Uh, it looks like we lost Fabian. Well, he was tired and drunk. <laughs> and uh, from what I understand, he only gets stuff from Paraguay, and unfortunately, it's packed. I've seen this processing. It's not pretty. I don't know if it's exactly the way they do it in Paraguay and Argentina, but uh, I know in India and in Mexico, they like to pull the plants and roll over them with a steamroller and then pile it up and pour ammonia on it to force it to uh, dry faster. So it's horrible. And with the advancements of the indoor cultivation that we have, it, it's senseless. Uh, I, from this small subject, from this little humble plant, cannabis, uh, opened up my eyes to a whole new world, aquaponics, hydroponics, uh, you know, permaculture, sustainability, uh, where you can take uh, an established old growth um, rainforest that uh, generally gets in between one to two inches of topsoil a year, Whereas with certain permaculture techniques, you can jump that up to 12 to 14 inches of topsoil a year. So yep. instead of us excavating it, we are producing it. So why is topsoil so important? Well, topsoil is extremely important because right there is where the bacteria and mycological uh, activity actually happens. There is, uh, it was released. Dr. Paul Stamets uh, did this study on it. And Dr. Paul Stamets specializes in mycology which is the study of fungi. Uh, to grow a plant, you have to have fungi. They're symbiotic. One will not exist without the other. People say, I grow hydroponics. I grow uh, with chemicals. You know, you still need the fungi. That's what the mitochondria is that we add to the tank. Uh, not everyone would, would know that because it looks like a powdery substance. So it just looks like another chemical. And, and really, honestly, the only difference between organic and chemical is the carbon marker. So if you want, you could just throw some carbon in there, and now it's organic. I like that. 
Well, you know, I was I was uh, perusing the YouTube channels uh, for different girls out there. There's uh, someone out there. I don't know if you all have the chat window open, but I'm going to type his name: N E One Can Grow. Now, uh, people are asking me if I'm a salesman or I'm trying to pump, you know, some kind of profit out of this thing. Uh, well, hell yeah. <laughs> Um, but, you know, that's not my intention. Uh, I would love to be able to do this and live off of this, providing this information for people. What we're trying to do is sift through the crap to find relevant information, stuff that we know to be true, and not just some hocus pocus bullshit. Um, I really wish Lanny was on right now because uh, he described it so perfectly in one of our videos when we were interviewing him, um, saying that you want to use cannabis as a holistic medication is like saying you want to drive a Maserati because it's a car. I can see it both ways, but really it's silly. Why would you need a Maserati to drive a car? I mean, that would be great if you had one available. But uh, you know, people need to decide what they really want, and the information's out there. We're not stupid. Um, human beings have a great capacity to learn. Oh, blowing up. So, uh, Luke, how are things over there? They're going quite well. Um, weather's cool for once, and the Memorial Tournament um, has been seeing a lot of people coming in. Going to make work interesting tomorrow. Oh, that'd be fun. Oh, wow. I'm going to have to turn this thing off. Do, 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 do. Um, Luke, you might be interested in this. Connecticut, okay, Connecticut has just enacted a state law. An active mer medical marijuana law. I, I think I remember reading it actually. Yeah. What's that? I said I think I remember reading that actually. Yeah. Um, and coming from uh, you know an area that is uh, you know uh, it's a small area. You know Connecticut's not that big of a state. Right. And for it to pass, I mean you got to think the majority of the people in that state are probably. Uh, either very educated or don't care <laughs> one or the other. Right. It's a new but I, I think it's great. I, I'm, I'm hoping we get 50. Maybe one of these days Ohio will get on the ball too. Oh, you know, there are ways that you can uh, initiate that should you choose. Okay. Um, one, awesome. of the, one of the ways is to search for your area for a normal chapter, and if there isn't one, you can establish one. And you establish your normal chapter there and start, um, you know, throwing nonprofit events. Um, and then from those events, you can hire people to lobby on your behalf, which is what we do here. Um, the way we get things going, Lanny gets people who are willing to sit down, look through the laws, and, and then go and speak on our behalf. Now, I just wanted to break in that those 17 states are Alaska, Arizona, California, Colorado, Connecticut, no, Delaware, Hawaii, Maine, Michigan, Montana, Nevada, New Jersey, New Mexico, Oregon, Rhode Island, Vermont. Washington, and the 15th one would be D.C., but... Right, uh, which I find funny, because uh, D.C., well, it's uh, it's known for... Well, the mayor is infamous, we'll say that. Um, it's kind of funny that uh, our federal government uh, is ran from D.C., but yet it's legalized <laughs> in D.C. That is an interesting irony, I yeah, think. Right. <laughs> Things that make you go, hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's all right. And at least it's not crack anymore. 
that is very true. <laughs> you don't need that again, do we? Lordy, lordy. No, I think that bath salts thing is kind of freaking people out. Now, I might like to add, for the individuals who might be watching, this is not genuine um, get, them at a, get them at a pharmacy or at a general oh, store bath salts. These are special, similar, with, and similar sort of chemical that have extremely volatile and um, cy volatile psychoactive ingredients. I unfortunately do not know what they are off the top of my head, but I do know that there are three of them in number, and they have been quoted as having the effects of heroin, PCP, and also crack all rolled into one. Some of you may have heard the incident about the uh, gentleman devouring another person's face while under the effects of this bath salt drug. On a highway in Miami. That's right. That, that is uh, interesting. Bath salt. Oh, uh, it's gone. What they're doing is they're uh, masking these heavy psychotropes in a salt, and people are eating them? I am not sure. I would be willing to look it up, though. I think you should. You know, when I hear I will. About it, it reminds me of the crop of other countries. Oh, wow. You see, this is what gets oh, me, is I bet oh, you I know they able to purchase this legally. I do not believe, I believe they have, I believe they have recently uh, illegalized the primary, the O's primary psychoactives. The, the BK... D2M3 or something like that. That uh, It's a research chemical. Uh, when <laughs> when when the chemical when a chemical is is formulated, all of its analog chemicals, anything that can fit to it, or uh, certain derivatives of it, it, it gets you know. I mean, obviously, you, you found the combination, so you just work out from there. Well, not all of them have negative effects, but some of them get through. Uh, we noticed this uh, in the late 90s, early uh, 2000, uh, when people were using things like uh, 2CB and 2CI, uh, 2CI and uh, DIPTI, DIPT, 5-MEO, MDA, these things were horrible in comparison to cannabis. Well, now, now, granted, um, you might die of too many cheeseburgers and diabetes if you don't watch your snacking on on cannabis. But like like Sarah said, um, moderation, moderation is definitely the key there. Yeah, a lot of people don't learn that. They don't. Um, you know, and the hard part is 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 when when you're pioneering into into an area. Uh, and I, I personally uh, have done this because I went through, uh, I think, about almost 200 uh, entheogens, which are botanicals that have psychotropics in them. Um, and we, we did some testing on it, uh, self-testing. When you're pioneering these things, you, you don't know what you're getting. You can look at the numbers and you can estimate and you can think. But, you're never going to fully know until you try it. And, and there's always that point where you're like, this is too much. This is, I'm going to die. Yeah, but I think it's important <laughs> that we have the freedom to do that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, um, these plants are useless otherwise unless they're curious about it. I mean, if it was available everywhere, kids would find some new craze that, that's not as cool. Like, forget that. We're going to go back to eating old bubble gum from baseball cards, you know. As far as is the researcher compound go? Uh, the um, research compound? Yeah. Well, you can contact just about any pharmaceutical company, and if it's not scheduled in that country or right. that state, they will produce it for a price. Uh, the, when when um, when the when MDMA first was created uh, in the late seventies, early eighties, it was perfectly legal. It was the first designer drug in the U.S., um, a gentleman in Texas who was going to become a Catholic priest, took it and found salvation, went to California to three pharmaceutical companies and started mass producing these and selling them all over the place and became a multimillionaire before, in 85, they scheduled it. Um, why are these things getting through the cracks? But something like, you know, something as benign as cannabis is still being 
you know, demonized, you know. Uh, it is. The, the research is there. Yeah, it is. Uh, the common sense is there. If you want to use it recreationally, it's not going to be as damaging as liquor. And yet we drink liquor and many people drink and drive every night. And we give people the permission to make that choice. We expect them not to make that choice. They kill people on the road. But we can't give people the permission to make the choice to smoke cannabis responsibly. And nobody's ever uh, smoked cannabis and killed anybody. In that not that we know of. Not that I know of. <laughs> not not, not directly. Not you know. because of the cannabis. I mean, if there's a pre-existing history. Well, no, I think that uh, the only violent cannabis-related uh, articles or things I've ever seen personally had to do with the violence of the drug war. And that brings us back to the legalization. Right. You know, we're well, putting... Here's actually the problem. Yeah, it, you know, by, by making it illegal, like we tried to do with alcohol, we put all the power right. uh, in the hands of and the various characters who weren't nice people, Which to say the least. Yes. You basically had a law that people refused to obey no matter what, and crime exploded. And with cannabis, you have the same issue. There is a law that refused to obey, and the law exploded, and it's, it's more prevalent because of the restrictions on it. Absolutely, and I think that the the money is a main factor in that. Yeah. These uh, yeah. these illegal groups don't want it to be legalized, so they nope. deliberately partake in these violent acts to demonize it in the press to keep that money in their pockets. And if we go and reschedule it, I mean, look at what happened in Mexico. They changed their government, rescheduled drugs, and had uh, you know decriminalization to a certain amount for personal use. And this was everything, not just cannabis. And they, they, these, these cartels, these, these groups of people, uh, they started fighting back by just uh, killing innocent people, you know, and kidnapping them. It's a craziness. It's like we but, think about the Ciudad Juarez region, which has well, been. God knows how long and how many, you know, police chiefs who have reti have taken out the job then retired or died in, or died uh, out there because the war never stops and it just keeps getting more and more brutal. Right. right. And it's not just that region. That's just a region that gets a lot of press. You know, yeah. that's all over Mexico. It's all over Central America. Oh yeah, yeah, and and it's sad too because really it's it's so simple to grow. Uh, it is. It's rather benign. Um, there was a gentleman in Canada who tried to see how much you could take uh, orally of cannabis to deliberately try and overdose himself. He was dealing with a bad case of manic depression. And uh, he consumed over 100 grams of extracted hashish baked into cookies. He, just took a nap. he <laughs> fell asleep on his chair and missed the entire weekend. And uh, he was very upset about this, not because he didn't die, but because he missed the hockey game. <laughs> He was trying to overdose. Oh, can but I if he wasn't going to overdose, dang it, I want to watch the hockey game. But he was angry because he missed the hockey game. Right, right. Of course. That's how dire it got Can for him. Canadian priorities. <laughs> we have some topics game. that we're going to stick to. One of those is in regards to the fact that the Veterans Association is trying to petition for Obama and the uh, political regime to go ahead and reschedule marijuana so that it be tr used to treat um, combat uh, soldiers of PTSD and other ailments that, uh, that are caused from being out in combat. And I know that you personally, Loki, you have to deal with the same sort of situation, not necessarily combat related, but they've also stated that uh, it, it can help in head trauma, Alzheimer's, all sorts right, of things. Right, right. Yes. If I remember correctly, uh, there are certain, like in football especially, with the linebackers, they sustain head injuries. Baseball rarely, unless they're not looking, they get hit in the head. Um, and they don't realize it at the time, but later in life it becomes very problematic. Yeah. Uh, as far as the PTSD, I honestly, I'm not a veteran. I have been to no war. War is scary. I would rather be in a lab 
with test tubes and urine. But uh, the PTSD, definitely. Um, if you saw me two years ago, um, towards the, the end, the, the latter end of, of, of a really dark moment in my life, I weighed about 100 pounds more. I had about, I don't know, two feet of hair. My face was like Grizzly Adams. And I could barely move. And uh, it was horrible. And I finally broke down. I gave up. I said, I said, this is it. I have to take all of these crazy pharmaceuticals, and I'm just going to give up. And then my father, now this is a man who spent his entire life in the military. Okay, he was 16, stationed in Okinawa in 56, and he'd been in the military up until, I think, about 25 years ago, 30 years ago, who tells me, well, I remember you tried smoking that pot stuff once in high school. Yeah, once or twice, maybe more. But, uh, you know, he, he, of all people, uh, said, well, it's legal in California. Why don't you come down here where we can help you with your family? Why not? Why not? So I came down, and I shed about 24 pills a day. I knocked out almost all the time release narcotics, things like OxyContin, simply by uh, adding a regimen of diet and cannabis. So I like, now, there are certain things that I cannot fix, and unfortunately, this is why we have these pharmaceutical companies, because there are some things that we do need these, these drugs for. Um, I have seizures uh, because I have two completely separate hemispheres of my brain, apparently. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but as far as like the PTSD uh, sleep habits, it helps a lot with those. Um, it helps a lot with tension and anxiety. I used to give myself migraines because I, was, I had so much social anxiety at that point in my life and uh, dealing with the pain of a spinal injury and the deterioration of my, my bones, you know, uh, I thought the world was coming to an end for me. I thought, well, as far as Darwinism goes, I fail. But, uh, you know, uh, like the phoenix, I came down here and planted a little seed in the ground and did really nothing to it. And boom. Um, so it, it gave me part of my life back. And now part of my life back is better than what I had before, which was nothing. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely happy for it. And the fact that our own Veterans Administration wouldn't be open to help people who defended our country and tried to do the right thing in a horrible, hostile environment, something we inflicted upon them, and to not allow them to have this kind of peace is just crazy to me. It reminds me of the Oregon Normal Cannabis Cafe. Um, I wrote a piece about the cafe there, and I spoke to many veterans from the Korean War, the World, uh, Vietnam War to Iraq, uh, Fallujah. They were all in there. And there was doctors and lawyers and all these people that you would see on a regular basis, but you never would ever think that these people were utilizing cannabis for what they were utilizing it for, uh, you know, and to see the difference firsthand, um, it compels a person, you know, scientists are always going off, we need concrete evidence. Well, the concrete evidence is going to come when you see it. But the only way you're going to see it is to take that step and try and change the laws. And I, you know, I think that it's crazy that they, they'll prescribe Marinol to veterans. They'll prescribe you Marinol, which is completely ineffective for PTSD, by the way, because it's the CBDs and the CBNs and the CBCs that are working mainly in this to ease the tension, to slow down the synaptic fire. Well, despite, despite that, in the article that I read, mm -hmm. they are actually, they're saying, screw what they set up over at the Hill, we're going to freaking prescribe it to them anyway as long as it's legal in the state. There you go. They made the decision they're just going to do it. So, Good. I mean, they're going at odds with the White House, but, you know, they need to do it. They realize the medical benefit for this, and they're saying, screw you, we're doing it anyway. 
which nice. is pretty awesome, and that helps. Yeah. And then another thing is, boom, we have a breakthrough discovery in medical marijuana cancer treatment. Yes, I remember um, reading about that. This first came about that I know of through a gentleman out of Nova Scotia by the name of Ricky Simpson. It's definitely someone to look up. Um, you know, just a normal, everyday kind of guy who, uh, in being out in Nova Scotia, he's quite isolated. So in an attempt to help friends who had some melanoma or skin cancer, he started working with this ruderalis strain and um, mixed it with a sativa strain. And it's just growing wild. You know, he's just collecting it. He's not, he's not growing it in a greenhouse. There's no, there's no special treatment. He's just collecting healthy wild plants and he's extracting every cannabinoid out through a polar, non-polar extraction and putting them in the 10 cc syringes and they're applying it topically. People are finding that it's actually starting to re repair damaged cells. Well, apparently, uh, if I remember correctly, Hebrew University, uh, Professor Raphael Meshul took cue of this and started doing a major research campaign out of the university there. Um, other universities followed, which is fantastic. Um, though the legal system up there still tries to prosecute the poor man as a drug dealer, even though he makes no money off of it. In fact, he goes into debt every time he does it for somebody. Um, they have to release him. But the, the, the medical community, the scientific community is like, well, wait a minute, you know. Uh, we got to look at this. And Dr. Raphael Mishul says it. People use cannabis because it works. Simple. It's as simple as that. And, and, and out of all the plants that we can have on this planet, I, I think this is one of the simplest plants to grow. Um, coming from a, a, an organic farm kind of background, uh, there's this old saying amongst, amongst the old organic gardeners is, is feed your soil, not your plants, and it'll grow. Now, in D.C. alone, on both sides of uh, the river, one of the rivers there, I mean, all around the White House, all through D.C. were, were just acres of this wild cannabis grown back, back in the 30s and the 20s, you know. And uh, it was just in such abundance around there, and nobody paid any mind to it. And then all of a sudden, they unleashed this campaign. Well, I'm sure everyone knows all the sordid tales of the past and the the propaganda, the emperor wears no clothes, yes, you know about this. Thank you, Mayor LaGuardia, for your contributions, you know, and thank you, the Treasury Department and Hearst and, and Dow Jones, all you guys, for, for making this illegal so that you can be rich. If, if you've you ever seen, seen I'm sorry if I'm in right. If you've ever seen the film Reefer Madness, it's a uh, propaganda era, a uh, propaganda film from the 30s that blows the ridiculousness of uh, marijuana and its dangers way out of proportion. It's, oh, well, it was, first, it, it was first made by a church group uh, that put it together to try and scare people because they didn't right. want certain people to make some of the different class of people, um, whatever that means. So, uh, you know, being upstanding Americans and all, you know, God forbid you go against God or whatever was, at the time. Meant to target parents. Yeah, it was. It was. Like, it I was trying to bring up the, the, the funny part of the film was um, with the Billy for Children the musical, and the lady who played the drug dealer was still alive, and she came out for the performance, <laughs> and she said, "It's fantastic." That is she fantastic. The, the movie movies were new. We thought it was just fun. We we didn't even know what marijuana was. We were just told to act these ways, and we had fun. She's like, I've never smoked pot. <laughs> Most people didn't know what marijuana was back then because that was the wrong phrase for it. It was cannabis. It was hemp. Hemp. It was, hemp. It was hemp. cannabis smoke. They, nobody used the term marijuana except for slang. It was a Mexican slang yeah. that was used in the yellow news in order to turn it into this demonized drug. Half the people that were voting against it didn't even realize that they were actually voting against hemp. Yeah, they, they had no idea that they were one and the same. They were, ki they were killing the drug that they enjoyed the most, not even realizing it was being used under a different name. It was subterfuge is what it was. It was a trick. It was deliberate. It was yeah. deliberate. But we all know that crap. Yeah. What, we don't yeah. know, what we don't know is how simple it is to grow this thing. 
Now, I, I, I get a lot of people ask those that. questions all the time. And uh, if you don't have the seeds, but you have access to a plant and you want to propagate it, this very simple technique. A lot of people know about it. It's called cloning. And it, it's a simple bee hormone. You can get it at any flower shop, Lowe's, anything. You don't even need that. You, you really don't with this plant or any hardwoods. Uh, you take a cutting of the branch. You treat it with the bee hormone. Keep it in a moist area. Keep it warm. And keep the humidity above 90. They have wonderful little trays and cubes you can use. In fact, I think I have one I can show you guys. Uh, let me grab it. And it, it's, yeah. it's fantastic. No, I can get it. Uh, it's fantastic because it, it, you know, it's designed to root plants. And this, we use this for, for not just cannabis, for all of our plants. Uh, right. We, we went around. Uh, Sarah and I went around and cloned just from around the neighborhood, which was awesome because yeah. it's just that simple. And some of these other plants are harder to clone than the can. I mean, literally, you can cut the thing and throw it into the ground and forget about it, and it grows. I've seen pictures of some, one that was a throwaway. It got thrown out. They didn't care. They threw it, the whole plant. They pulled it out of the pot, threw it out. They're like, oh, it's not going to do anything. You see this picture later on. It's crawled. I think it's in Jorge Cervantes' canvas body. And the plant curls along the ground, sets root, and then goes a little ways and starts going straight up towards the light. It just takes we, hold. We call those volunteers. And Jorge was telling a story about some volunteers. Uh, his friends, they were growing pot and they just kept throwing their, their cigar or their butts from their joints and then the seeds just off in the corner. Well they had a small cannabis garden that they were trying to grow in Spain there and it was failing horribly. It was failing. And Jorge went out there to go see it and they're like, Oh, our plants are dying. He's like, what are you talking about? They're massive. They're beautiful. But just several meters behind them, there's these gigantic cannabis plants growing completely unattended. And these guys are like, we thought we had a loss, but that's where we throw all our garbage. And the plant actually used the garbage as nutrients. Um, well, okay, trash. Cloning. I have here a very simple setup. You can get this at Home Depot or... Uh, um, you can get this at a, at a flower shop, hobby shop, grow shop. And what it is, let me see if I can get my camera here. And what it is, is I'll take this dome off. The dome is used to keep the humidity on. But as you see here, I'm going to pull one of these out. These little clones are put into... There we are. There we go. They're put in these little plugs that are specially made for plants all types of plants. And all we did is we cut a little branch, snip, snip, right off the plant. We stuck it in this thing, which is treated. These are rapid rooter uh, plugs. They also have something called uh, a rapid, right? right? Root, root riot. Root riot. Root riot. I'm sorry. Root riot. Root riot. A rapid rooter is also a good one to use, as well as soil. You don't need this. You can fill these little containers with soil. And they'll do just fine. But those are so clean. Yes, they're, fast. They're, they're clean. They're, they're very fast. fast. They're very airy. And they got these little trays that hold them apart. And you can check by lifting it out of the reservoir tray. You can check to see if there's roots that are forming in these little holes. Right. And in which Definitely. case you will know that you have a rooted a rooted plant. Um, and at that point, you can take that that little clone, and uh, I'll show you what you do with it next. We have one sitting here waiting, which will bring us into some growth tips that uh, I wanted to get out there for people that they've been asking about. Um, we have here a little clone that we've transplanted into the soil. And I use these little inexpensive $2 for some 120 Dixie cups simply because I can see where all the root formation starts to come in. I think I can make it up. Yeah. Let me see what we Let's see if we can get it on the better cam there. Not really. In any case, when you have these in front of you, you'll see the dark soil. You see the contrast of the dark soil. That one's starting to push itself uh, up. Yeah. You'll start to see 
little lines forming down that are white. It's hard to see on the camera. See, I can see them at the bottom, I think. Yes, definitely. And, and they're starting to push themselves out, as Buckner had said. Now, this is a blue dream. Now, I'm just going to go over some real simple, basic parts of the plant. Um, when we speak about these plants, um, we don't necessarily always know what it is that we're talking about. When I say nodes or inner nodes, uh, Luke, would you have any idea what that means? Inner nodes? Is that what you said? Oh, nodes. Nodes. Okay. Um, no, I cannot say that I do. Right. A node is this section here where you start to see a little branch out of some more leaf. Oh, okay. right, right in the yeah, corner. Yeah, I, I think I see it. I think I see yeah. it. Yeah, let me see if we can get it up here on the high-res camera. Josh will point out where the node is. And now yeah, the inner node is sort of bulge. in between those two nodes. You see that little space where the stem yes, is I do. very close up before another branch comes out? Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Can't, that can't inner see it node, now, but between I saw those it. two points is where you want to cut it to clone it. And then you take that and you stick it into your, your soil, your rock wool, your bee hormones, your rapid rooters, what have you. Very simple. This, this little plant here in that, in that cup can be transplanted uh, hopefully soon and give me and the other patients here in our house, Buckner and Sarah, enough medicine to get us to next spring. Ideal, isn't it? Well, um, unfortunately, pharmaceutical companies don't like that so much because uh, you're not taking their medications and, uh, damn it, you're off of those narcotics. And we thought for sure if they were physically addictive, you'd stay on it. But it didn't work with cigarettes either, damn it. <sighs> so that's a simple technique of propagation. I know a lot of readers out there, good readers out there, like to see. A lot of people shy away from the seeds because they're like, ah, seeds, uh, terrible, it doesn't take the potency away. It doesn't take the potency away. If you take the weight of the seeds out, the weight for the plant grown is going to be the same percentage. It's just not going to look pretty. But breeders, they, they fight for these ones. You, you hear about feminized seeds. Feminized, feminized. And let me give you the real term for feminized seeds. It's called terminator seeds. It's a way of making you have to buy their seeds again and again at $80 a piece. And that's, that's a GMO, a gen genetically modified organism. Um, these babies uh, were taken from seed. And the way I know that this was uh, taken from seed that was a mature female is uh, there's, a, there's a term called uh, uh, banisteriopsis. That means banisteri, meaning that it comes out both sides. You have branch, you have a stalk, and then you have a branch that comes right out both sides. This, as it matures, starts to come out one side and then the other side, and then one side and then the other side. So for any of the patients out there that are going into some of these grow shops, and you're seeing these uh, beautiful plants, and you're, you're being told that they're female and they're absolutely healthy, be careful. Because if, if they're not branching out like this, if they are symmetrical, you're dealing with the seedling. And the likeliness of them guaranteeing that it's a strong female seedling, at that point, uh, you start to get into some genetic defects like hermaphrodite uh, in your plants. And, uh, you know, that's where your potency starts let me, to go poo-poo. Let me clarify something. When you said banisteriopsis, you said it comes up both sides. What banisteriopsis is what this is doing is where it's going up and then up. Yeah, it's kind of zigzagging. It branches right. out right. at almost a, right. like this sort yeah. of yeah. way. Well, you see them coming out symmetrically straight out on each side. That means seedling. That means it has not matured yet. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah, that was good to know. I, uh, I, I tend to model things up a bit. I get really excited sharing knowledge with people. This is how I feel about most things. So, um, but uh, we're hoping that this little baby here is going to do as well. Um, 
so far we're we're happy with it. It's the Blue Dream. It's a precursor to this one that has become a very, 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 very popular strain with us. Uh, it's Skywalker OG, but not just Skywalker OG. It, this brewer from uh, a collective here in California, legally operating under proper, uh, Prop 215 and Senate Bill 420, uh, Divine Remedy, very small. They don't accept a lot of patients. They have a very small menu, and the gardener puts all this time and effort into working these plants, but they're all top shelf. They're all worth it. Um, this one just happened to be one that we absolutely love. Now, we've had Skywalker before. We've had Blue Dream before. But whatever the grower did to this plant, two thumbs up, double rainbow, all the way, I would love, love to come in and, and just learn from you. You know, uh, I, I did talk with uh, one of their drivers. I don't know how much clout he has, but I said, hey, you know, if you want to let us come in with some cameras and see all of your stuff. And he was like, well, yeah, totally. That's fine. Hmm. We're, we're a business. Come on in. Take a look. You know, that's, that's great for advertising, which is fantastic because – before, for, you know, gee, since 96, when I started doing this, it was very behind the scenes. You were, weren't sure if you're dealing with somebody shady or not. Well, you're starting to get more people that are like, okay, well, it's just another business. And they run it professionally. They Absolutely. Show it professional right Absolutely. And that gives you a little more reassurance because if they're investing that much into it just to bring you something that is called medicine, then, then you should see that. You should see that investment. You should see where it's coming from. Now, I've been to a lot of dispensaries. I have been to hundreds, maybe even thousands of growth sites. Um, and every one of them has their, their corpse and the wonderful silver linings and stuff like that. But every one of them is unique to the grower's tastes. Um, and that's all we're trying to do is we're trying to capture you know, what has been affected. Why is this so successful? Because not everyone wants to grow it. Honestly, it's a pain in the ass if you're growing it indoors. I mean, you still got to check timers and pH and stuff, but it would be so nice to have someone like Divine Remedy just down the street, call them up, they just show up, nice, polo shirt, doesn't got to be a tie. <laughs> he, looked, he looked proper. I mean, I invited him in, Butner invited him in the house. You know, it's, you know, in some of these places, like my father and I, uh, when I first came down, we couldn't find a lot of these dispensaries. There wasn't, uh, there wasn't a, a place like weedmaps.com here in California and other, other uh, sites like that. So we just went off of what, you know, the cards at the clinics were there. Well, anybody can put a card there. <laughs> And we go to this particular dispensary, and I don't remember the name, but they weren't open for very long. There's this guy, he's got a gun in his belt buckle behind the counter, and he's got crap, and I say crap lightly, crap in a jar that he's trying to force upon me. And I'm like locked in this room with him, and I'm like, okay, you guys are freaking me out. This is not cool. I want out of here now. And, uh, you know, they ended up disappearing really quick because nobody would go there, you know. <laughs> what would they think this was, you know? I'm like, ah, you put me in a locked room with a guy with a gun saying buy this. You know, where we've been to places like BP and it was a beautiful clinic. You know, they had they had granite floors and they had nurses and doctors there. They had uh, educated Bud tenders, not just young, good-looking girls and guys. These guys were educated. It, they didn't know. They deferred to somebody who did know. And I asked them everything from the way they grow their stuff to their curing techniques to, at the time, they were allowed to purchase from patients any excess stuff. Um, you know, what was their testing processes? And I found that these guys used a mass spectrometer. And, in fact, they used it so much, they spent the 80 some grand to buy a used one just to test everything that comes in there. And people are saying, well, I can remember when I used to buy it for this much and that much. 
well, are you guaranteed that you're getting what you're getting? Is it in there? Is it on paper? Are these people willing to put their name out and their business to say that this is what's in here, we have quality control, and when you get it, it comes to you in a sealed container, and it is everything it's supposed to be. And if it's not, you can hold us liable. These places started sprouting up, and, you know, they, I think what it is is people that are in government here don't necessarily know exactly how to uh, allow the medical marijuana thing to evolve. You know, these are people who probably never smoked pot, maybe once or twice in high school or college or something, you know. They're, they're in the politics their whole life. You know, so uh, silly stuff like that around here, it, 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 it's nice to see this change come about to, like Sarah said, to break the stereotype of this taboo that these people are long-haired, loser, criminal, in fact, I, you know, uh, I think the only one who's really criminal in this house is me, and that's probably because of my use of the English language. You know, so I mean... You're <laughs> criminal because you outlawed it in a lot of cases. Yeah, and it, it's, a lot of it is ignorance. It's definitely ignorance. But um, hopefully those grow tips uh, helped. Uh, with the with the clones and hopefully for those that are in California a little enlightenment on uh, different uh, things that are happening. Uh, I believe we have an initiative that's coming up. Uh, Del Mar, for those of you who live in uh, Southern California, Del Mar uh, has just petitioned to regulate medical cannabis in their area. Dispensaries. Uh, dispensaries, right. They uh, they they had. The township had previously said no because there was lots of military people there. Well, as Buckner had mentioned before with the VA, um, that's not a big deal anymore. So they raised, you know, uh, two thirds more than they needed as far as signatures to get this initiative going. So now those that are in Del Mar don't have to drive to LA, Orange County, well, to San Diego. Is, that's an interesting point to bring up LA because LA just put a ban. Yeah, they're putting the hammer down. They're only allowing small. They're only allowing patients and their primary caregivers to grow for themselves. There's, you're no longer allowed to run a dispensary in right. LA. Yeah, yeah, and that is one of the things that passed over here is they forced the clinics to grow the cannabis there to regulate it. Now that's what I would have thought at first. If you're going to be, you know, regulating this thing as medication, it should be grown under controlled conditions. Um, so, I mean, for me, that's a simple, you know, idea. That's what I would do if I was going to start one in the first place. But it's not cost effective for these places, you know. Luke had a question, I think. Yeah, Luke. Yeah, my question was in regards to the whole LA's banning thing and, ref and uh, referring the growth exclusively to the patients and their caregivers. This mu I might I thought was kind of impractical because of the s in the sense that you know what if the individuals do not have the time or the physical ability to be able yes, to invest yes. what yes. might be it, I mean you've been going over and over again that it does not require that much effort but there is the possibility that it still might not be enough to grow yeah that and that's 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 another thing you know that I get asked a lot is you know, People are very interested in, in how to grow this themselves, and they want to be able to grow enough of it, but they don't want to have to put too much effort into it. Case in point, we have a, a senior gentleman who's not quite mentally stable that we're helping. Um, I think it's Alzheimer's. I'm not sure. But uh, he's got these notions in his head that he's going to start a very high-end uh, hydroponic system, an NFT system, or nutrient film technique and and grow his cannabis indoors under lights and he's not going to have to do anything and he's just going to go in there and just magically pick it up there. Like literally, um, it is the most difficult system to it, run. It is and uh, if he didn't have Buckner and I there, he, would, he wouldn't even know how to put the system together. He had no clue. Um, unfortunately, he's one of those people that needs a dispensary. Right. He needs uh, a, a dispensary that will deliver it to him because I've been with him in his car driving. Now, I voluntarily gave up my license when I became disabled 
uh, when I knew I could probably have a seizure or the medication might affect me. I, I gave it up. I do not have a license. It wasn't taken from me. But someone should take this old man's license because I have never, he crossed four lanes of traffic at 60 miles an hour to take an exit. I've seen that. You don't want these old people on the street like that. I've actually seen somebody get side side. It's insane. Okay. So uh, I would strongly suggest a heavy dose of cannabis for this guy just to keep him in the house. Uh huh. You know, <laughs> so the uh, people who need uh, and, and the funny thing is, is beforehand he tried the simplest thing, which was growing them in dirt. But because he ignored it and forgot about it and never mm -hmm. watered it, they died. Um, they they, they do that. require some kind of care, especially taken out of their environment. So if, you, if they're not readily available to the open air and the wind and the water, then you have to you have to maintain a certain amount. But like a house plant, you know, you water it till some water comes out the bottom. Every once in a while, you add a little more dirt. It's simple. Um, so uh, don't be afraid out there. Uh, new patients or new growers, people living in LA, we're here. Uh, Casa de Loki is here to find those answers if you can't find them. And if you have them, we're here to share them if you want to share them. Um, we definitely are going to share everything we have. Uh, that, that is our contribution to this. Um, we're, we're unfortunately coming to a close of the first show here. I want to thank you, Luke, for sticking in with us. No problem. Um, I want to thank Fa uh, Fabian and Lucas from Argentina staying up so late to be here with us, those of us at Casa de Loki. And for those of you viewers that have come by and, and was listening to us, we do do a lot of grow uh, topics. We wanted to touch on a lot of things today to, to pique your interest. So please, even after this broadcast, if you see this uh, and you want to know something, post it in our comments. We are vigilant about getting the answers to those things. And if there's anything that you see in our videos, from uh, types of lighting to types of soil and hydroponics mixes. We're not making a dime. We're nonprofit. And quite literally, we pay to do this out of our own pockets. So when we, when we tell you, uh, you know, this is what we've used, this is what we've found, this is what the majority of people think, the decision is up to you in the end, ultimately. But we can definitely help you try and clear away a lot of the garbage. So uh, don't lose hope, LA. And uh, yay for Del Mar, and let's let's hope that Ohio has an old chapter. If not, maybe Luke, you can look it up just after this. And you, you do a little research on your own. The information's out there. Yay, Connecticut, 17th state. Yes, Connecticut. Connecticut, thank you. Double thumbs, two rainbows all the way. And um, Loki Jen, Costa Loki, Buckner, Sarah. Um, we are here for you guys, always. So um, definitely uh, subscribe, rate, comment. Uh, check us out on Google+. Plus. We're on Twitter, at LokiGen. Hit me up. I really have nothing else to do all day but do all of this for you, and I love it. So uh, we'll come to an end. I want to thank everybody for the show, and uh, please give us some pointers, tips. Tell us what you want to know. Um, don't be afraid of hurting our feelings because really, you're not. You're, you're giving us good information. Just try to be civil about it. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> so, and, and I, I have no problem being proved wrong. In fact, I encourage it. Uh, definitely prove me wrong because if you got something better, I want to know it. So, uh, Casa del Loki. Uh, Luke, we'll talk to you later. Thank you again for seeing you guys next time. I, I know this is a difficult thing for you coming completely outside of the community be looking in, but uh, I do, I do. I so we're going to end this thing right now as I'm getting tat. <laughs> good night. All right, well, everybody have a good night, and I, I hope somebody got some useful information out of it. Well, Jim signing out.